developed a very bold new vision for what was then a heavily uh, decaying and downtrodden section of the city of Boston, really under the heading of the sort of 1960s big plan theory, the early renewal theory. And this was the vision. This was the bold new $100 million vision for the downtown waterfront. Here's the shiny new central library, devoid of traffic. Uh, here's the Long Wharf with what eventually became the Long Wharf Marriott, as we talked about in the last meeting. Uh, the, um, uh, the aquarium is shown here in a somewhat different fashion. Uh, and then what the area that was eventually to become Harvard Towers is shown here. This is from the early mid-1960s. The BRA put out a call for private investors to uh, show up and make the kind of investment and sponsor the type of development that was shown in the slide. Uh, there weren't any takers. But eventually, with some cajoling, Ted Berenson, the developer from that era, showed up and said, have we got a deal for you? We're happy to help catalyze this vision that the BRA has put forth for the downtown waterfront with major private investment, major residential investment, which was one of the key objectives of the BRA at the time, was creating this residential community on the waterfront. He said, but I need a compromise. And the compromise is this. I want you to take these two 20-story buildings and stack them on top of these two 20-story buildings, and I want a third one. So the BRA at the time had set forth a vision for a relatively low-rise waterfront environment, uh, but in the interest of catalyzing waterfront development and private investment in the downtown waterfront at a time when there was zero interest in private investment in the downtown waterfront, uh, they agreed to this compromise. And this was the original image of Harvard Towers. So notice there's an extra one there. Uh, but compare and contrast the vision that we last saw with the series of relatively low-rise structures with the compromise that was made at the time in order to catalyze this private investment. So here we are in 1971. This is a vision a view from Long Wharf. You can see the new aquarium here and the Harvard Towers under construction here uh, in Long Wharf over on the right-hand side. Here we are in 1973, an aerial view showing the Harvard Towers then very freshly completed. These were apartments, market-grade apartments, when they were built uh, originally. Uh, and you can see this little sliver of Rose Wharf. The third tower was to take place, was to be built on a portion of so-called Parcel A3 or Renewal Parcel A3 and Parcel A3S, which was kind of the northern half of Rose Wharf. But it wasn't long after the, these two towers were built, the third tower was going to be in phase two, uh, that Ted Aronson showed back up the BRA uh, with plans to try to advance the third tower, phase two, and the BRA took a different view of the proposal at that time than they had previously. Uh, I think uh, given the impact and given the visual impact of these two towers when they were built uh, and designed by NAP, the BRA took a view that perhaps the tower building of the waterfront had gone too far and they withdrew the permission for the third tower and ultimately over a period of years thereafter, uh, uh, developed a different vision for that particular parcel, as well as the Rose Wolf parcel next to it, which ended in the development of the, of the, uh, the uh, complex that we currently sit in that was recently detailed. A really wonderful example of pedestrian scale, relatively low rise urban waterfront, mixed use development, compare and contrast with other towers. So as we look to the future of the Howard Towers complex, we sort of consider this past. And we'll talk a little bit about its present. So you consider the future, we want to talk a little about the context in which the Harvard Towers complex exists. One of the most important themes that we see is that the original vision that the BRA set forth and the Chamber set forth of creating a residentially oriented waterfront community, really the neighborhood of the city, uh, has very much been uh, realized to some degree. The BRA has stayed the course over the decades and contributed to the development a vibrant residential area. By residential, really, I mean both uh, traditional residential condominiums, apartments, and also hotel, uh, because they share a lot of amenities and, and interests in terms of activities and uses and so forth. And so you see with the Blue Dogs, the kind of residential neighborhood, the node that's been created both in the downtown waterfront of the Watt District, uh, but really is illustrative of what's going on all along the, the uh, core of Boston waterfront, Four Point Channel, uh, and the Northern as well. So the residential context is a key theme. We also look to the planning context and the regulatory context, both as it relates to the existing municipal harbor plan and existing zoning for the area, uh, and also as it relates to the DRA's uh, very thoughtfully done green edition 
planning study completed a few years ago that underpins the process that we're all here participating today. It identifies opportunities for improvement. It sets forth some, some dimensional guidelines uh, and also creates some key sort of planning themes that it's hoped that future development will, uh, will respect. In addition, we look to the overall pattern of the city and the built environment in the city. And we use this slide just to illustrate uh, part of that pattern. The numbers that you see in each of these circles is the FAR, so it's a measure of density uh, of the overall downtown area. And the pattern that we observe is that the downtown waterfront area generally has a relatively low FAR, low density, and low rise structures, whereas the higher density, higher rise structures tend to occur. This is a general urban pattern on the city side of the Greenland. And this is really the pattern that's taken place over a number of decades. In addition, we look to the context with respect to the public realm. Not only the waterfront public realm, that folks like Rain and Vivian and Bruce and others have been working for many decades to uh, improve, uh, and we're very grateful for that, for that input, but also the new public realm, the Greenway, on the other side of Harbor Towers. We now find ourselves embarrassed with bridges on either side. But it makes it terribly important to consider the quality of the public realm on all sides of Harbor Towers when it was built was truly an island uh, in, in many ways. And that sort of leads us to, uh, to, uh, to today. We'll start with a brief overview of the property, and then we'll ask Lee to uh, give us a quick walk around. The property itself, the Harbor Towers property, we can think of as four distinct parcels. There are three uh, parcels currently in the ownership of Harbor Towers, uh, Tower 1-2 and, uh, and Parcel C, and then the parcel occupied currently by the Harbor Garage, which was part of an original integrated development plan with the residential towers to provide services and amenities to the residential towers as well as to the aquarium uh, on either side. Uh, and this is sort of the introduction to what Lee will speak to uh, in terms of our snapshot of our community today. So Lee? Thank you. <clears throat> Just this neighborhood has changed. Like blighted area, uh, filled with decaying, unused, abandoned buildings over the past 40 years. So our towers too uh, is different from what it uh, was uh, from what it started out to be. Uh, what it started out to be, as Johnny said, uh, <clears throat> was an integrated uh, parcel of land that included what is now the garage, uh, which is now a development area, uh, and the, the wall to the north side of Tower 1, uh, both of which were, uh, well, uh, the garage was sold before the place was condominiumized, and at the same time, uh, the wall was uh, granted an easement to the owner of the garage, so that Hub Towers really has a uh, little, uh, much less control over these areas than it used to have. Uh, which makes it even more important to the residents of Hub Towers that they participate uh, in a, uh, uh, actively participate to make this entire neighborhood uh, one that is uh, congenial to residential living. Uh, as Yanni pointed out, the residential uh, developments uh, stretch uh, from uh, Battery Wharf uh, down through Burroughs Wharf, Lewis Wharf, Union Wharf, uh, all the way past uh, Harbor Towers, all the way up to um, uh, the Intercontinental, to say nothing about what is going on along the sea. So this really is a primarily residential area now. And our, <clears throat> our uh, residents have been particularly active uh, in uh, civic associations uh, so as to ensure that development uh, is uh, congenial for residential living. Uh, 
District of Columbia. Mr. Park is a uh, Harbor Tower resident. Uh, several of the members of, of this uh, Municipal Harbor Planning Advisory Council are members of uh, our residents of Harbor Towers. Uh, and uh, we have been very active at the Greenway Harbor Association and the Harbor Island uh, the Council as well. Uh, <clears throat> I should say that at this point, that um, it is important to understand, in terms of future development, the policy of Harvey Towers. Uh, it should not be, as it frequently is, uh, including last week's article, uh, and, uh, we, an article in the law last week, it should not be suggested or inferred uh, that uh, Harbor Towers is a knee-track anti-development. That, that is totally wrong. We are pro-development. Uh, we understand that the garage will be developed and other areas will be developed. Uh, we understand and uh, support uh, the Greenway District Planning uh, guidelines in general but also understand that these were uh, set forth uh, basically in a vacuum without any specific uh, proposal before them. Uh, and if a proposal comes before them that, um, uh, that uh, requires a modification of these guidelines, we will examine, uh, we will be receptive to uh, that proposal uh, and examine it uh, based upon the criteria of whether it proposes something that is beneficial to the area, beneficial to the city, and beneficial to the Harvard Towers. Uh, <coughs> now, uh, but since there is no such proposal at the moment, we'll tell you what we're doing uh, with Harvard Towers. Uh, we're going to take uh, a virtual walk around here in a minute. Uh, to see what Harbor Towers is doing to improve uh, its own uh, <coughs> its own place within the neighborhood. Unlike Rose Wharf, uh, we were not built and have legal constraints that prevent us from building uh, many of the amenities that, uh, uh, that Rose Wharf had. Um, <coughs> we can start out by taking a look a rather imposing barrier uh, that sits on Atlantic Avenue. Um, uh, this uh, photograph here shows a piece of property that um, uh, is owned by the city of Boston and uh, uh, sits um, at, at the um, southerly edge of uh, Harbor Towers where it abuts the property that it's owned by uh, Rose Wharf. This is a view uh, of, of from Atlantic Avenue down uh, Rose Wharf, showing the lovely view that uh, passes by half uh, of the uh, harbor and across to the airport. Another view of the same. Um, this is the a part of the uh, municipal harbor walkway uh, that uh, joins. Uh, Harbor Towers with the Rose Wharf uh, part of the, uh, uh, that's the view from the other side, looking toward Rose Wharf. These are our famous laptops, which uh, are an endless source of controversy and discussion. Um, uh, that's a view down the, uh, the uh, walkway toward the aquarium, uh, and another view of the same. Um, now, uh, we will, in the next uh, year, be spending a couple million dollars uh, to repurpose the uh, balcony railings, which have uh, been replaced sporadically and individually uh, and create a, quite a patchwork uh, uh, picture. We're going to uh, uh, put in new balcony rooms, all the balconies, uh, 
so that it will once again take on uh, the uniformity and brutalist uh, style of high end pay uh, and uh, make the building much more attractive, to say nothing of removing the rust stains. Um, we have also engaged, and will be uh, at considerable expense, and uh, we, we expect to be spending several million dollars in the future uh, on the ground plan. What you're looking at there, what, what you were looking at there, is the loading dock, which faces Atlantic Avenue. Uh, it shows that what time does. When it was built, it was facing the uh, central artery. Now it's facing Atlantic Avenue. Uh, and it's very unattractive, uh, uh, both the residents and non-residents uh, like to see the trucks going in, in there and picking up the dumpsters, otherwise cleaning it up. I have this uh, forbidding looking um, uh, <coughs> guard house at the entrance um, that, that, we'll, uh, that we have, are looking at. Uh, this is the uh, wharf that I was uh, speaking of a little earlier, uh, which uh, we have some, still have some influence on. That wharf frequently in storms uh, gets battered pretty badly, such as that. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, uh, from time to time, uh, you know, we've <clears throat> had our little uh, problems getting it fixed, but it always gets fixed. Um, also, we have spent a considerable amount of money fixing uh, the seawall and uh, keeping it clean. Uh, as you can see, uh, that uh, seawall frequently has, uh, has um, uh, stuff like that uh, washed up. Now, this is a conceptual plan drawn up by Hamilton, uh, a landscape architect, showing the various areas uh, in the property that are subject to discussion here. Uh, you can go, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, some genius uh, managed to find the time uh, to take this picture looking from Manhattan down uh, the walkway to Harvard too, just exactly the moment when there was a truck blocking um, what I wanted to show you, which was, <laughs> if that truck weren't there, what you would see is a fitting looking uh, guard house. Um, and what we are planning to do is to replace the guard house so that the view you get down here will be comparable to the one we saw a few minutes ago uh, down on the opposite side, on the Rose Wharf side, uh, down past the buildings, uh, onto the harbor and across to the, uh, the airport. What we're going to end up with uh, is much more plantings such as this in front of Tower One. Um, and, what's the next one? Uh, and instead of this uh, little patch of land that is owned by the city of Boston, we are, have initiated discussions with the city of Boston uh, to so that we can either buy this or, or uh, service it. So instead of being used primarily uh, as, a, um, as a relief station for dogs, it can, it, it can be uh, used for uh, plantings uh, uh, in, such as what you see in this picture. Um, now I'm going to go back to and I'm take all of what's going to happen. Thanks. I'm trying to prognosticate and I'll be very brief. When we look at challenges for the future, Lee outlined some of the concepts that we're thinking about for the property. Uh, we see sea level rise, global climate change as a natural challenge, and also the challenge of participating effectively and coming out with a, a, a balanced outcome uh, with a comprehensive planning process in the Law District and along the downtown waterfront that's currently taking place. So, uh, this is a, a graphic, thanks to Vivian and company for this, which I'm sure many of you have seen. And Frank by. Uh, however, although that paints a very uh, physical picture, even today, uh, during major storm events, this image was taken during Sandy, this is the seawall along the harbor walk. Uh, we, there is a little bit of splash over even today during major storm events, and that has caused the trustees within the past 12 months to make certain repairs and upgrades to the existing seawall.
just to help to address existing conditions in terms of new riprap, sealant, and so forth. Uh, here, uh, you can also see some of the improved seawall itself. And just to wrap up, we, we certainly do uh, another challenge for our community in the future because Calvert Towers does have a long history uh, and the, the concept of participating uh, actively and productively and constructively in a broader uh, community here is, is maybe a little bit new uh, to Calvert Towers. Uh, we we want to make sure that the outcome of this particular process and other planning processes to follow area uh, in terms of zoning represent an appropriate balance between all the various interests in the area, uh, residential and otherwise. And we see that as certainly a challenge because consensus building uh, in a room like this is challenging <coughs> for sure. So we'll end there and, uh, and take questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Young Lee, thank you so much for your presentation. And we're so excited by your opportunities that you're considering regarding the site and how uh, you might, might evolve over time. Thank you for your presentation. So, um, do we um, have any questions for, for these good folks? Bruce? Um, I guess one's a quick comment and then a question. A uh, quick comment is if you're looking for a way to create a laptop bar that's kind of like the alley bar, I think that there'd be a lot of other beer And whatever the regulatory obstacles are, we all want to come. Thank, thank you, Bruce. My, my question is, I mean, if, you're, if you don't want to answer it, I, I totally understand that and maybe would ask uh, Ricky to give uh, Rich the, the microphone on this. Um, your, your, your neighbor um, mentioned that he thought of this district as primarily a resident. And I just wanted to um, hear um, either uh, Rich's comments or preferably yours because um, I do um, acknowledge and have uh, friends and even family um, that live in this district. Um, and, and, and they're important to me. Um, but, but I'm not sure whether I understand exactly how to use that term, if that's the term you Sure. You're right, I'd be happy to, uh, to answer that. When the BRA developed this vision along the chamber in the early 60s, the vision was truly for a residential enclave on Boston Waterfront. Over time, of course, other uses have been added to that enclave, both civic uses like the aquarium, that was the, one of the early catalysts, hotel uses, commercial office uses, retail and restaurant uses, but fundamentally there, there has been maintained along the waterfront some recognition that it's a neighborhood, it's a residential community, so that the mix of uses, and there is a very diverse mix of uses, and that's certainly welcome, needs to be handled carefully and in a balanced fashion so that non-residential uses and the impacts it caused don't overwhelm both the existing residential uses there and also the potential for additional future residential so we're not trying to suggest that it's exclusively residential, but simply acknowledge that it is truly a residential neighborhood. And whatever occurs in the future on any of the development parcels up and down the waterfront, whether they be major investments or very modest incremental investments, as we saw at the long war, simply need to be cognizant of the context, the residential context, up and down the waterfront. That's, that's all, but I'm trying to be you know, too extreme in that state. Sure. Um, I just want to commend Harbor Towers for the improvements that you're looking at. The power in, the greening, you know, potentially fixing the fences, changing the fences, what, what have you. you know, I know you're still doing the conceptual. Because frankly, when you look at what Rose wore and what John Conley was talking about, when you look at the photos that he showed in the residences where, where you have the townhouses and such, you know, they were built much later. They were built in the late 80s. And there are the gates and such here at Rose Wharf that you know you might see along other parts of, of your property and such. So I commend you for trying to bring your property to the 21st century where there is such activation and talk about bringing people back to a clean harbor. And I think it will fit very nicely with the continuation from Rose Wharf here to what you're doing and beyond to some of the other residential areas. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Paul? What's the progress with that front piece in front of the pool? You know, the, the relief station. It, it's very early on in the process. Um, yes, Lorraine. Um, I'm just curious, I didn't understand, I guess, the diagram that you had in the Allison property. Is there any increase? 
increase. But is, it, is there going to be an increase in public access on your property, or is it still going to be the narrow power up connection that we have now? Now, Lorraine, before you start calling it names, I'm now, just saying, now, I want to give you credit. I want to give you credit for making it easier. Let's, uh, let's give credit where credit's due. But that's I could explain that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that wasn't a willing uh, decision at the time. Okay. But let, let me uh, let me say this. And I think this is a diagram that you referred to earlier. Yeah. 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 Yeah.